everyone. I'm Harleen from the marketing team at Adyogi and uh, joining me today is Abhi Sharma, Associate Director Marketplace at Adyogi. Today, we're deep diving into the world of marketplace events, the massive sales extravaganzas hosted by giants like Amazon and Flipkart. These events can be a goldmine for sellers, but strategizing and executing them effectively is crucial. So buckle up as we explore these extravaganza events. So again, we all know the feeling, Prime Day, Great Indian Festival, and the list goes on. These marketplace events are massive opportunities, but with so many options, it can be overwhelming. So let's talk about strategy. What factors should sellers consider when choosing which events to prioritize? Is it just about picking the biggest ones or is there more to Right, Aline, that's a very relevant question to be asked and uh, something which is often uh, you know, overlooked by brands and it's not just the question you know which event uh, to prioritize but also which platform to prioritize if we talk about different marketplaces you know leading marketplaces amazon Flipkart, mantra so there's a need to prioritize events that align with your you know target audience uh, and also the categories product categories that you operate in if you have a luxury brand and are targeting customers in tier one cities uh, Amazon would make more sense for you. Uh, on, on the other hand, if it's a mass brand with customers in tier 2, tier 3 uh, cities, Flipkart would be a better option there. However, it makes sense to maintain a mix of both the platforms. On a category level, if let's say you are an electronics brand, uh, you have to be a part of the Great Indian Festival, the Big Billion Days, right? Uh, these are by far the largest events on marketplaces. And if you have a fashion brand, you might not scale as much during GIF, but more on, uh, uh, you know, during wardrobe refresh sale on Amazon or end of season sale, end of season sale, all these different sales. So category would also influence how to prioritize. Also, in addition, you should consider factors like uh, competition, uh, your marketing budget. Uh, so if ads budget or the overall PNL is a concern, you might want to pick smaller events uh, when the competition is not very aggressive. So when category leaders, they go combative in an uh, event, it can become really, really tough for small brands to compete. So which can result in poor results, uh, poor performance overall. Yeah. But, but when exactly should sellers start preparing? Is it a last minute scramble or is there a sweet spot in terms of lead time? And what initial steps should sellers take before the event to ensure success? Right, right. So uh, that is one of the most frequently asked questions. What is the ideal duration or ideal time when you need to get started with the event preparation? Probably two to four weeks prior to the event is the sweet spot there. However, uh, it, it would depend on the scale of the event that you're preparing for. Definitely events like Prime Day, GIF, etc. They need much more preparation in comparison to smaller events, for example, Freedom Sale or uh, Republic Day Sales, etc. The first step here is to sort the fulfillment and other hygiene aspects of your brand, right? In uh, here, we would, uh, you know, include your inventory. So ensure there are optimal inventory levels in the top selling, top converting products, right? And the products which uh, serve as cash cows, the products which serve as stars for the over, uh, the brand. Uh, second, plan discounts and deals, and it is important to do this, you know, at least two three weeks before the event because enabling those, those deal tags, a deal of the day, uh, lightning deal, that takes time on uh, the platform side also. Let's say if we talk about Amazon, uh, you know, it might take a week or two for them to get that implemented. So it's better to get started, you know, share the information which what kind of deals or what kind of offers are you gonna. Uh, do during the event with the Amazon team or the other marketplaces at the earliest. Third is leverage uh, FBA or fulfillment by whatever marketplace you are there on because uh, seller ratings do matter. So just plain listing under FBA can boost your uh, organic visibility. So it's important to do that. Uh, fourth would be to explore ways how you can push for higher AOVs, right? Because higher AOV would result in better rewards. So there are different venues that you can uh, leverage probably introducing combos or bundles uh, of let's say t-shirts or introducing gifting packs. So this is also something that we've seen uh, works really better uh, during events. Right. So yes, one is inventory. Second would be the content. Uh, it's really very really important to update your brand store page 
uh, with whatever event is coming uh, let's say prime day banner the deals etc and also to upgrade your listing for better conversions next is the overall budgeting of your ads how much to spend before the event what's the ideal duration of the pre event buzz that you do how much to spend uh, you know during the event how much to scale during the event and what kind of budgets post the event amazon says that 93% of prime members right who shopped during prime day they browsed products on amazon during the prior week right so people actually start visiting the platform well before the event actually even starts uh, you know takes in uh, basically to take buying decisions what up explore products and this is the duration when people add products to cart they might not end up buying but they add products to cart and later on when the offers are live they uh, you know complete the conversion there and uh, also brands that advertise during prime day pre prime day they see 16% better roas during the event again a reason to ensure that you spend before the prime day uh, or any other event uh, on prospecting on getting new customers new visibility right now once the budgeting is done get started with campaign creation so have day parted campaigns uh, you can get some insights from amazon marketing stream there are tools such as adobe to see which part of the day works better for your brand uh during which as the conversion rates are the maximum the cpcs are the lowest etc so create day parted campaigns basis that second is to have backup campaigns ready because you know during any event there are chances that your campaigns uh, are not spending as you had planned so they are under spending right and during the event duration uh creating new campaigns adding new products new targets that's the uh, you know last thing that you would want to end up doing so it's better to have a second line of campaigns just in case your primary campaigns are not spending enough uh, uh the reasons could be many it could be uh, the competition response also so you have the second line, line that can take in so what are some best practices sellers can implement to manage their performance during the event itself and uh, this could be anything from fulfillment to customer service so let's hear some tips from so uh, there's a long list of uh, you know best practices here and just talking from a ads point of view uh you know they as i said uh, there will be a long list of things that uh, you need to do at a marathon level and uh, so just to simplify these can be clubbed into two buckets one is monitoring and tracking and the other one is execution so uh, talking about monitoring and tracking the first point would be uh, uh, monitoring total sales data every hour so it's important to know what are your top sellers and uh, to optimize campaigns uh, during event uh, you know durations uh, total sales data is primarily that you need to look up to because due to the sheer scale of the event it is very much likely that these ads dashboard of maybe uh, amazon or flipkart they will face some attribution delays right so as a result the ads roas figures might be deceptive and uh, just refer to the total sales data about selling uh, what uh, you know what to scale so, so whatever the top sellers are during the event just scale those campaigns without worrying much about the ads you have uh second would be uh, tracking real time category trends and uh, it's very important to know what is the degree of scale of the category that you are operating in right and uh, the amazon team or the let's say Uh, your uh, you know category poc from amazon or even your category uh, agency right they can help you out in getting those real time uh, category trends for your particular uh, portfolio uh, third would be your visibility at front end so on selected generic keywords competition keywords and also brand keywords and this is simple to track uh just have a list of your top performing keywords at the top performing targets and if the competition is taking up visibility there just increase bits right and so this is for generic and competition uh talking about your brand keywords this is a non negotiable area of visibility uh you may set super high bits on all your brand keywords just in case you want to be stress free during the event that there's no need to track uh, your visibility but under no circumstance you should let the competition take this uh, you know area of visibility 
Uh, fourth one would be uh, the competition price and stock availability. So if any of your related competition goes out of stock or increases prices, uh, this could be a temporary thing also, probably uh, due to some glitch at the uh, platform side or something of that sort. In such cases, you need to adopt an invasive approach. You need to eat up all the uh, you know ad slots uh, on the product pages of that competition and uh, increase the bids considerably. So this should uh, you know get better conversions and a much sought after share of the competition market. Uh, but here, uh, be cautious about when the competition is back. Uh, back in stock or let's say the price falls back in uh, you know to the regular daily price uh, because uh, it might end up that you continue burning money there and uh, the conversions drop considerably now uh, this was largely from monitoring and tracking side what to do by implementing changes or let's say managing your campaigns right first is real time campaign management uh, your budgets and bids uh, need to be updated basis the key parameters that you are tracking and do not leave the account unchecked for more than 4 hours, right? 3-4 hours. So the traffic trends and competition responses can be very chaotic. So be on the top of your ads during the event days. Second is your day parting. Uh, as we talked, ensure uh, you keep them active and uh, manage bits during the decided hours of uh, the day. Third and you know a very important point is which can uh, reduce the you know hassle to much extent of the overall uh, event execution is automation. So using uh, third-party tools like AdUV's dashboard, you can set rules at campaign level, ad group level, keyword level, uh, even at product level, right? So uh, for keyword uh, or the targets, you can set when to increase the bids, when to decrease the bids, when to pause the target, etc. And also at a uh, uh, you know product level or a SKU level, you can pause and pause uh, ASINs or uh, basis their performance during the event. So it makes it very easy to stop leakages, uh, especially for large catalog brands. But one thing to be noted here is that deploying automation does not mean that there would be no tracking required. The tool might be able to you know make the required changes but human intervention every two hours is very necessary here yeah pretty interesting Correct. so abhi the event is over but the work doesn't stop there ideally we want to keep that momentum going so how can sellers leverage the post event period to capitalize on the generated interest and boost sales further are there any specific strategies that they should employ certainly uh, you know uh, post the event uh, there are a few uh, key things that uh, need to be uh, done, need to be ensured. But before getting into this strategies or what exactly is to be done after the event, one, you know, foremost important thing is to scale down your campaigns. So by reducing bids, by reducing uh, the budgets, etc. Immediately after uh, the event and uh, preferably at midnight itself, because if your scale down is not done properly. We've seen accounts where they've considerably overspent by the next morning. So by the time, let's say next morning at 10, 11, you come back to your uh, campaigns, there'll be a lot of budget spent already because competition has gone mild, right? Your bids were really high and uh, the algorithm just uh, made your campaign spend. So yeah, scale down is first thing. Next is to analyze the impact impact against the preset goals uh, or the overall strategy that you had for the event. So whether it was visibility, whether it was getting end to be customers or just total sales, uh, right? Uh, through upselling and cross selling. So you need to identify what strategy worked, what did not work towards your end goal. Third is to document all these learnings, right? Because these would be handy for you uh, during the next event, whatever next event is coming up, right? Fourth is leverage campaign learnings to refine your campaigns further uh, to optimize your uh, future campaigns that you run. So all, you know, the event, uh, so the durations that you had uh, during the event, maybe the pre-event, uh, during event, you scaled up, you know, you had a lot of 
more budget uh, in comparison to BAU budgets that you do. You did a lot of A-B testing, you did, did a lot of experimentation, right? So that definitely would have, you know, new learnings for your campaigns. You can identify new uh, hero products there. You can identify uh, some uh, performing campaigns and targets. There will be new search terms which can be extracted through all those, uh, you know, uh, campaign data that you have that you gather, gather during the event. And uh, last would be to utilize top of funnel ad solutions like sponsored display on Amazon or PCA on uh, Flipkart to re-engage the event, uh, you know, uh, audience that you have. So uh, let's say uh, there were some high intent customers who visited your product pages, right? Uh, so retarget them after the event, especially during the next uh, uh, sale that is coming up. So let's say you ran campaigns during Prime Day. Next uh, sale would be your uh, uh, freedom sale in August, right? So in freedom sale, reach out to the audience that you targeted during Prime Day with better or let's say some more lucrative offers uh, that you were having uh, during Prime Day. So yeah. um, that's all from my end of it. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today and for sharing these in insightful uh, tips and strategies that I'm sure are going to come handy for all the e-commerce and D2C brands uh, during this much-awaited uh, festive season.